Hello. Hello, Vince. Jason here. Hey, how you doing? Very good. How's how's you in the the land of rock these days? <laughs> Pretty good. Keeping it moving, keeping it rocking. That's good, Vince Martel. Um, you guys got some good stuff, you know, that's that's being released. But stop in the name of love. I mean, you should be really proud of that. The sound the sound yes. is incredible. Thank you. Yes, we're very proud of that. Thank you. Let's say on you, you know working on this. I mean, the guitar tones is, is uh, just like it was back in the day, almost. Oh, good, good, good. Glad to hear that. Has there any, been uh, new equipment put in your uh, stuff these days, or is it you know the same old stuff you're playing? Uh, no, it's uh, probably a couple of new effects here and there. You know that I continue to add to the arsenal just to keep things lively and uh, exciting. But uh, it's basically, you know, an amp straight into the effects boxes, pedals, and then into the amp and kind of like that until I'm doing it. When you do look at old, you know, footage, you guys still almost look the same. I mean, from, you know, the, the, the late 60s to today, we can still tell who you guys are. Isn't that incredible? Like, you guys aren't aging, it seems. And when you get to see this new video, you guys are like looking awesome, you know, back in the day as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a great video that they put together. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's I think music keeps you young, you know, it keeps you alive. And uh, it's just one of those things that it keeps rejuvenating your spirit and uh, keeps you going in a forward direction, I think. It's got something, there is something to that, you know, doing what you love to do. Uh, and music just has that effect on me, I'll tell you. It always did. That's why I'm just sticking with music. That's it. That's all I do. It's like um, when you're doing workouts, you're lifting your music gear, you know, you're going to here and there, you're doing some workouts, you know, and you're you're working it. And that could be a part of the secret, you know. Yes, it could be. It might be. There's, there's something to that. So that's what I'm sticking with it totally. That's it. That's all I like to get into whatever I'm doing, surrounded with music. And Vince, let's say for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, tour dates and stuff like that, are you guys um, going to be playing uh, much gigs uh, around soon? Oh yeah, we, we have, uh, we had nine gigs set up and uh, they're going to start right around the end of this month. Uh, so we're getting together to get a little rehearsal uh, done around the 24th and then I think like probably on the 26th and 27th we're going to start and we have uh, a handful of gigs and then I don't know what they have if, if they're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, if they're going to be adding to it for this year or they're just going to, you know, take a long winter off or whatever and then start again after the after Christmas. I really don't know if that fall into the schedule, but I'm just glad that we're getting out there again to rock because this COVID thing knocked everybody out of business for like a year and three quarters sitting around, we couldn't do no gigs. So I'm just glad that we're gonna get started again. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed, uh, of course, I don't want to jinx nothing, you know, because uh, I just hope that uh, the world is ready to, to rock again because uh, I've been ready for a long time. And Vince, let's say you're talking about, you know, the greatness of uh, Vanilla Fudge, you know, and uh, certainly Tim Bogart, you know, how was it, you know, playing with him, you know, live versus a studio, you know, session? I'm sure it was pretty interesting. Uh, live is always the most fun. Uh, there's uh, a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of uh, interesting situations and, uh, you know, people around, you travel around together and uh, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's the whole totally encompassing experience when you're out on the road uh, traveling around. The studio is another aspect which is cool too. You know, you get into the studio, but it's a whole different, uh, it doesn't have the, um, the people involved when you're in the studio. That's kind of much more concentrated to the musicians and the producers and whoever's in the studio and that's it. You get there, but you know, you get, you get into, you're actually creating the music that's going to go down and, last forever so that's a a beautiful high to be able to do also so i like all aspects of it it's just you know it's great but it's totally different timmy great guy to work with 
on the stage, very exciting bass player. I think he's one of the one of the best that was ever in rock. And uh, uh, and in the studio, you know, with, now with this last studio thing, we had to do it. Uh, we didn't work in the same room together doing the studio thing. We had to send the uh, music out to California, and you know, Timmy wasn't really feeling good. So he had to go down to a studio in California, and that's how we were able to get his bass playing on the last song that way. But before that, in the old days, it was always a lot of fun however we did it, but totally different experiences, but just a great guy to, to work with, Jimmy Bogart. Do you ever uh, get to you know watch YouTube and see him play, you know, let's say in Japan with Beck Bogart at Pace and all that stuff? I mean, oh, that's, sure. that's great footage as well for uh, Tim Bogart. I know. I know, yeah, he's really one of a kind, one of a kind musician, very intelligent uh, player. No, he was a sax player originally in high school. Hmm. Did, you, did you know that? I did not know that. Wow. Yeah, so as a result, he applied a lot of the phrasings that he brought to the bass that he was getting into with the saxophone. Wow. So that's one reason that he had a different slant on playing bass than most other bass players have. Interesting fact. Very interesting fact. And, you know, it shows that um, when you get something like that, you know, you'll do creativity as you can imagine because it's, it's, it's totally unique now. He's not playing like the regular guys. That's right. Yeah, he had his own slant on everything, the way that he played. He could go off on a tangent that, you know, it didn't almost relate to what was happening in the music in that bar. And uh, he'd come right back, right on where you had to be, right on the top of the, mm. on the one, on the top of the beat, he'd be right back. I mean, he would do these incredible uh, riffs that he would just come out of his head. That I remember the first time I ever got together with, with uh, him, and because originally we were the, you know, we became the Pigeons, but when we first got the group together, It was uh, Tim Bogart, Mark Stein, and this fellow named Joey Brennan on drums, and they were looking for a guitar player, and they, they got me, so I went over to their house. They picked me up, actually, in the Bronx, New York, went over to Timmy's house in Ridgefield, New Jersey, and Mark had his new Hammond B3 organ uh, on the porch there, in closed porch, and we jammed. But I remember saying to myself, well, wow, This guy, Timmy, I mean, you couldn't really, because of the way his phrasing, you couldn't pick up where he was, how he was thinking his riffs, but and everything came out like beautiful. So we just went with it, you know, at least that's what I did. And, you know, it just worked out great. And then and then eventually it makes you guys pioneers, you know, of the, the genre of music, you know, with the, the psychedelic rock and stuff, which everything works out great. That's right. It just it all came out, you know, the arrangements. We all would arrange the music together. Uh, Timmy had a great input. Him and Carmine, like uh, two players with one heartbeat, they would have come out with their own sections. And uh, Mark Stein, which had that, he had some classical background. Uh, and Mark used to be a guitar player, believe it or not, uh, before he was playing organ. He uh, started out on guitar. So, uh, you know, he had uh, his slant and I had some classical uh, 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 bringing up when I was a, a kid listening to classical music my sister's a classical pianist uh, so along with the R&B stuff and everything else that they were into and I was also into and we all just melded together and were able to come out with some beautiful arrangements uh, it was a fantastic uh, thing Let's say I'm playing live and stuff, and, and you, you must have played tons of shows, you know, when you count them all. You keep me hanging on. I mean, has there been a time you guys got tired of playing that, or is it let's play for the fans? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't get tired of playing it. I try to, you know, I, I think we all play it, I don't know about the other guys, but I know I always attack it from slightly different each time because it's a, a different experience. Even though you're doing the same song, there's things you can do on it to just when to hit a chord or what, what uh, uh, style of uh, 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 particular phrasing do you want a chord? Do you want to use a chord with voicing? Because you could do different voicings on a chord. Uh, generally, I go for as much power sounding 
as possible. That's what I did in the old days. I still like to do that when it comes to um, everybody hitting, try to get the, the most power uh, and emotion which is what we all actually tried to do on all our stuff. Uh, so it was uh, one of those things where we just could do the same song, but it's always a charge. The people love to hear it. So because of that, you're picking up that vibe from the audience. So it makes you feel like you're not, you're not tired of it. You're glad to be able to, to do it. It's, mm. it's one of those things. I don't think we ever, I never heard any of the guys talk about it you know, getting tired of doing any of the music that we've done, even though we do the same show a lot of times, we put different things into it, you know? Well, that's good, you know, and it's like when you're you're doing stuff like that, you want to add some new characters and elements sometimes and, and do it, you know, your way and have fun with it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, you got to keep it fresh. You know, like I'll do that intro that I come out with, uh, with the guitar intro and I'll accent and then a couple of notes slightly different and take a little bit longer to, to do it and make it say, you know sound and then other times i'll do it like i did on the recording which is pretty fast so uh you know it depends on how i feel at the time and the vibe i'm picking up from the uh, situation that the audience the music it's uh, and that, that that's what i do I, I keep it fresh for myself and i guess the other guys are doing it too because we always enjoy doing our shows mm-hmm. everything we do we, we, we love to do it Vince let's say you know almost to fin- finish off the interview uh, let's say you know stop in the name of love you know it's the same Supremes type stuff you guys um, yeah. thought this would be planned you know f- you know, 50 years later that we're going to be releasing this one no we had no idea actually but uh, when we did uh, you know, Mary Wilson passed away from the uh, Supremes, and uh, Timmy was sick. And our uh, first uh, hit, <clears throat> excuse me, was uh, uh, "Keep Me Hanging On." Supremes R and B Motown. So we just felt that uh, let's do uh, another Motown song, and then we started toying actually with the idea of maybe doing a whole album mm. of Motown or Supremes or something like that. And so that's why we settled on doing uh, Stop in the Name of Love. It felt like uh, it was a nice one to uh, to come across with. Uh, Mark Stein had a big part in bringing that particular tune. We had a, I actually talked about quite a few different tunes, but he had worked on an arrangement that he uh, felt. And what we always do is we support each other. If he shows up with, with something that he feels is, uh, he can sink his teeth into musically, yeah, we can make a masterpiece out of it if we all put our heads together and that's kind of what we did we all got into it and started coming up with different parts and uh and then it, and it changes as you're doing it in the studio it's growing with you as you're doing it so you have to have a positive attitude everybody and mm-hmm. in the, in the band has to work together and that's what we always try to do work together and support each other if somebody has an idea let's let's give it a shot let's try to do it let's see if we can you know really do something different that's never been done with the song and that's how we always like to approach music the approach always approaches it in that kind of aspect so to speak very well said i mean music is endless so there is tons of music to do and to have masters like you guys doing them that's a great imprint you know in the music history so yeah we we all love that as fans. Oh, well, you know it. Thank you. We yeah. do too. Yeah, we love doing that. We love creating music. I do that all the time. I have my own situations that I work with the fudges and touring around the road. I have a couple of different groups that I mm-hmm. work with different uh, aspects that I can get into. And it's always fun. I look forward to the rehearsals and everything. It's just music is just, it gives you, it's like, um, it's like if you go to the gym and you work out, you get the endorphins get released and you feel euphoric. It's kind of something along those kind of lines mentally. Music does that for, for I, I'm practicing. I practiced this morning and last night in my house. I'm, I'm doing uh, another song that I'm working on and I love to put on the guitar and practice. And then I have to do other things so that put the guitar down to take care of some other domestic stuff, but then I'm back to put the guitar. I'll be playing again before the day's over today. Hmm. 
a real a soldier of music you are. That's awesome. Oh, got to do it, man. I love it. Thank you. Sure. Well, Vince, I really enjoyed talking to you today, and um, finally we get to talk, and um, just love your, your new stuff, and uh, just keep on doing great work. All all our fan, the fans are loving it. Ah, uh, God bless you, Jason. Thank you so much. I hope we can get up to your neck of the woods and rock out, man. If we do, come on down. Let's all say hello and hang out and enjoy the music. Absolutely. So, Vince, you have a wonderful evening and week, and uh, talk to you later. You got it, brother. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs>